Poised on a razor-sharp ridge high in the Andes Mountains sits one of the most spectacular places in the world. Machu Picchu. Perched 450 meters above the Urumbamba River, this city in the sky contains everything required for daily life. Houses, fields, water channels, all with breathtaking views. But Machu Picchu was no ordinary city. Dotted amongst its terraces are enigmatic structures. Magnificent temples somehow linked with the sun. And a grand stone palace seemingly built by giants. They provide tantalizing clues as to why anyone would build on such forbidding terrain. The site selected is a particularly difficult one just from a technical standpoint. Architect Vince Lee believes that no one would choose to build here without good reason. There's very little workspace. It's just on a very sharp mountain ridge. There's almost no flat land. So why would anyone build in this impossible location? What drove Machu Picchu's makers to construct a city above the clouds? The answer lies in the forging of an empire and the creation of a legend. In 1438, Chanka warriors launch a massive attack on their neighbors, the Inca. With the enemy poised at the gates of his capital, the old Inca emperor flees to safety. But his son is defiant. Spurred on by a vision predicting victory, he leads the Inca into the impossible struggle. Against the odds, the Incas crush the invaders and proclaim their young leader a hero, bestowing upon him a prophetic new name, Pachacuti, meaning transformer of the earth. And Pachacuti wastes no time living up to his title. Seizing power from his father, he embarks on a campaign to conquer neighboring nations. Pachacuti's military might quickly prevails. Within his lifetime, he lays the groundwork for an empire that will stretch up and down the Pacific coast of South America. I think of him as a sort of Alexander the Great of the Andes. Author and explorer Peter Frost has traced Incan history for 30 years. Pachacuti was the man who turned the Incas from a regional power in the Cusco Valley into an empire, the biggest empire the Americas ever saw. Spreading from modern-day Colombia in the north to Chile and Argentina in the south, the empire of the Inca would command the loyalty of more than 10 million people. Pachacuti orders a series of massive building projects that will help his army control this vast territory. But military engineering is only part of the emperor's grand plan. Pachacuti also plans a spectacular city to demonstrate his powerful new status. Machu Picchu can accommodate up to 1,000 people, yet it was built high up in the Andes Mountains, a hundred miles from the center of his empire. Some experts think it was a royal retreat. The ruling paradigm of the, at the moment is that this was a winter palace of the Inca Pachacuti, and he held his court here for two or three months during the winter. But Peter Frost believes this theory is too limited. It's easy to slip into thinking European, you know, uh, Henry VIII's Hampton Court or whatever, uh, Windsor Castle, you know, uh, Versailles. I find that uh, inadequate. For Frost, the answers may lie in the Inca's spiritual beliefs 